Major L. Gordon Cooper, the newest and most nonchalant man in space. An Air Force jet pilot who proves his mettle in manual flying during re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. This is the continuity of astronaut Cooper's long day's journey into space on a flight plan calling for him to circle the globe 22 times, traveling nearly 600,000 miles on a lonely voyage lasting more than 34 hours. He is transported from Hangar S at Cape Canaveral in the familiar big white van. The hour is 4.57 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Led and trailed by cars with flashing lights, the tractor trailer moves across the broad expanse of the missile test center to launch complex 14. The scene at the launch site is spectacular on the largest scale. The big gantry and the missile itself outlined by huge anti-aircraft searchlights. The stage is set for the appearance of the star, the tenth man and sixth American to rocket into space. In his 20-pound silver suit, Cooper is ready to give it another try after the disappointment of the day before, which saw the countdown move to within 13 minutes of launch, only to be frustrated by a faulty radar data analyzing device at the tracking station in Bermuda. He rides the elevator up the 123-foot-high gantry, cradling the rocket. At 5.32, Cooper is reported inside the capsule, making himself comfortable for the historic flight, designed to study how well his capsule works and how well an astronaut performs over an extended period in space. At last, the countdown to blast-off of the mighty Atlas. Eight, seven, six, five, four. The space vehicle Cooper christened Faith 7, because it embodies his faith in God and country, his loyalty toward the Mercury team and his confidence in it, is boosted into orbit in full glare of publicity, in contrast with the secrecy of Russia's manned space flights. Throughout the nation and at every corner of the globe, the U.S. lets the people see, lets the people know the step-by-step -step progress of Faith 7 as the one-and-a-half-ton spacecraft is separated from booster and tower and settles into its planned orbital path more than 100 miles above the Earth. Cooper takes the control stick to rotate his capsule 180 degrees on its yaw axis so that he is riding upright and backward with the craft's blunt heat shield pushing a path through space. Cooper's first rendezvous with history comes when he shatters the U.S. record for cosmic travel established by astronaut Walter Schirra, who did six tours around the world last October. The seventh orbit is a go-no-go -no -go point in the astronautical logbook, and back on Earth, headlines happily and hopefully forecast the full 22 orbits. And indeed, Cooper receives the good word from Mercury Control to go into the 17th orbit, and all the way. Earthlings hear how he slept through several orbits. The exciting adventure reaches its climax, 22 orbits. In the Pacific Ocean, the aircraft carrier Kearsarge, flagship for the recovery force, with a salute to Cooper's spacecraft, has kept the vigil, and it becomes an anxious vigil shared by millions everywhere, for Cooper has to start his re-entry flying manually, owing to a faulty electrical system in his capsule. Mercury Control advises him that on re-entry he is to go to fly-by-wire, a sort of semi-automatic system, and to carry out the operation on a countdown from astronaut John Glenn aboard a tracking ship off the Japanese coast. In less technical language, it meant that Cooper literally had to take himself out of orbit by maneuvering his spacecraft into position for the critical re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. He also had to align his spacecraft with the horizon by means of lines etched on his cabin window. And like the expert pilot he is, Cooper responds quickly and efficiently to the information given him on re-entry procedures. Then, a sigh of relief echoed around the world as word is flashed that the small drogue parachute designed to stabilize Cooper's spacecraft had popped open. Everything going just like clockwork, Mercury Control Center reports, as the main 63-foot parachute blossoms at about 10,000 feet, lowering the Faith 7 to a landing in the pre-planned recovery zone about 80 miles south of Midway. 
the choppers go out to meet the spacecraft as it comes down. The Kearsarge spots Cooper's craft bare miles off her port bow, splashing to a bullseye landing. The tension that had mounted to near the breaking point is dramatically lifted. Astronaut Gordon Cooper is a cheerful spaceman now. From the very beginning, through long preparation, he was all go. Now he sits atop the space world. <laughs>